it's actually it's actually more more dramatic as all right. So Jim Jim was here and he stepped out and so now we're supposed to what fill in for him. Are we live now? We're live. Oh, we're live. yeah. The show is starting. <laughs> Hello, yeah. DTLT. Today, Jim is so, will be no. joining us in a moment. Yeah. As usual, he needs to make an entrance. But anyway, premise for the show. <laughs> Today we are going to be well, and a warning as well, because if you don't like spoilers, and you choose to right. remain within the safe bubble of the summer of oblivion, you may not want to hear what we're about to reveal. It's true. It's it's going to be the dark underbelly. Yeah. What are we going to reveal? I mean, of S O B. What is there well, to reveal to the so people like the who pop, who yeah. believed everything? <laughs> I mean, what, what do you mean? <laughs> what, whatever could I possibly mean? No. Today um. we're going to disabuse Andy of his belief that that's not even the right mustache. That's terrible. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. awful. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wait, I didn't exactly prepare for this. Well, hello, Doctor Oblivion. Well, Doctor, thank mm. you for joining us. It's good to be on the show. And my wife is calling. <laughs> she to wants be on to the be show. on TV. She does. <laughs> we wives start going there and then. Hmm. So, what do we want to talk mm. about mm. In, with regards to? <laughs> well, the I think of Oblivion. one of the big things that people probably want to know is why. Dr. Oblivion disappeared, like how that occurred, that it seemed like the course was for three days or so going, I don't know what you would call normal, but you know, Dr. how Dr. Oblivion you, did not disappear. How he's getting into character. Stop, don't do that. <laughs> we can't take it for five seconds, much less the whole 15 <laughs> no, really. minutes. Damn it. Um, but then all of a sudden, Dr. Oblivion disappears, and then from that point on, it would just seem to be like chaotic yeah. narrative. So well, I'll tell my part of the that? story and then You're Martha not, was there. Lean in a little bit I'll here. tell my part of the story and then I'll let Martha fill in the details. Um, because I only remember one partial way, but it may be totally different. So day three, doing Dr. Oblivion. This is like the third hour. I've done hour shows for three hours. By day three, I was so burnt on Oblivion. He was boring me. The whole concept seemed to be lost. And when the show was done and Shannon and Lee were here kind of helping taking the Twitter questions and stuff and Martha was watching along and I got up and I was like, that was a fucking nightmare. I hated this show. I hated the whole way it went. I'm done with this. And then like Martha and Lee were like, what? It went all right. Although I wasn't convinced. They were like, yeah, we think it went all right. I was like, no, it's not. And then Martha was like, we got to think about what you're trying to do here. Like, what are you trying to? And so it was through them and their kind of ideas like, look, don't kill it yet. Because I was going to go right back to Jim Groom and say, okay, that was a little kind of joke I played. Now let's get to the class. But then we said, no, there's got to be some backstory to Dr. Oblivion. And that's when it hit us that next morning that Dr. Oblivion goes missing. No, that's not what happened. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> let's get to what happened. Yeah, you weren't what far happened? Okay, Let's get so the real story from Martha. <laughs> what happened was, so he was really depressed and we started talking and we said, well, you need to find ways yeah. to maybe get other voices on the show. Actually, he was, was on failing. a ledge, wasn't he? Yeah, that ledge right there. Uh, he was up on the roof. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the roofers. That's right. Spreading tar. No, um... And, and, you, and we said, you know, we need to get some other voices because it was very, it was this very like, it was a monologue. It was That's like, right. oh, the only voice that was really there was Dr. Oblivion and even Skyping people in. It just felt like there was, a, a, there was no dy dynamic nature to it. So we talked about ways to maybe at least get Jim on it for a couple days. And we said, well, yeah. what if Dr. Oblivion gets sick? And we That's said, right. okay, well, Dr. Oblivion's going to get sick. And at that point we said, well, um, Lee had been wanting to get on the show, and it was That's like, right. maybe we'll have Lee dress up and pretend to be Dr. Oblivion's daughter, and Bianca. she'll come on and say, Bianca, and say, um, you know, Dr. Oblivion can't be here today, I'm really sorry, but Jim's gonna, you know, I feel confident about Jim teaching the class. And then, overnight, somebody, who was it, produced that spider, remember the spider video? Of that crazy right. spider in do the we web. Still, do we know that who? was? Yeah, weird... it was Swatham. It was Swatham, yeah. right? Who had who been? Who was played by Todd Conway? Right, because Todd Conway, who had been from day one pretending to, to be, be the Dr. real Doctor Oblivion, Oblivion, challenging your character, that was awesome. put out this video with this weird sound. So we're in here and we're getting ready to do the show. And that wasn't prompted at all by you all. Nobody, no. You off he that. just he did that. He was right on it. And so much and just so, was I was bizarre. like, what's going on? Yeah, we Dr. weren't really Oblivion. sure, because at that point we didn't even know who it was. That's right. And uh, and so I was, I had said I wanted to speed up the sound and see if we could hear what he was saying. That's and right. I'm sitting at my desk and I sped it up. And you and I were listening to it, and all of a sudden you go, Dr. Oblivion's going to go missing. 
and this okay. that was like 20 minutes before the show and, and then it was we like put okay it all and then you were like and we're doing the first visual design assignment the first assignment will be create a missing poster for, for Dr. Dr. Oblivion, Oblivion. Mm -hmm. so it really wasn't right. planned even more than half an hour 20 minutes before the show like we knew there was going to be a change right. that day but we didn't know it was going to be that until the last minute and it's that kind of structure that <clears throat> Martha described she has a much better memory than me that structure that actually now dedicated or dictated the next four weeks of the class. You come in that morning, what are we going to do? Is Bianca in this? Is she not? And then how are we going to go? With a very kind of no structure to it at all, except for that we knew we were going to talk about it and come up with something to do within the next hour or so. And constantly reacting to whatever the community was throwing back at us. Yeah, because, right. because like the DS-107, right. that whole break off, that was also unplanned. Absolutely. Totally spontaneous. Part. So you came up with a term that I think is a good term well, to talk about DS-106, uh, the summer of oblivion, is this idea of the emergent alternative or, reality. Yeah, game. and I don't think I came up with it. I just, you know, we hear people talking about emergent gaming all yeah. the time and, you know, what that means. And to me, this is like the a fantastic example of at least the emergent ARG because I think a lot of people may be watching from the outside Yeah, thought that there was a little bit more of a road map yeah. to your class, but it was completely <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if they were convinced of that or not. Maybe not, yeah. yeah. So Although Downs did suggest it, it in yeah, his in that, post. In his hmm. post the other day that, that this was sort of a planned right. phenomenon um, but the ARG piece of it wasn't planned at no, all. No. I mean, uh, beyond there being this character that you were going to play. We just knew that there was going to be a Dr. Oblivion. I mean, the thing I wanted to do right away is I wanted to get this idea of a kind of fake professor and kind of make fun of this idea of the professional in front of the class, kind of monologuing. But I didn't have anything thought of beyond that. And it wasn't until Martha and uh, Lee were like, hey, this is, you know, let's dare us more you can do. Backstory to... Dr. Right. Oblivion that we really started to open up. But then that's when the whole thing just blew my mind. Yeah. Like and, a, the and a beautiful riff it. on that was when Andy came on to do the video assignment mm -hmm. and it just took the whole Dr. Oblivion thing to the next level because while he was doing that assignment you were you were talking with the PowerPoint and you were just very monologue right. going through things and people were like, oh, this is they were bullshit. They, they hated, they, they they hated, hated it. it. And they were just railing against you. People and like, then as I you became Alan Dr. Started, Oblivion, like, it was Google like... Plus hangout to yeah, talk about right. how much they hated you. Right. And that was And that was kind of just the, my little homage to the whole thing. I mean, yeah, the, right. to me, it was watching this unfold from my seat over there and watching you guys talk about it and scheme about it and having, you know, what's coming next. Um, it's, you know, just as entertaining being in the office as it is being out in television land watching And that one more so than any of the <laughs> other narrative, I think, fooled more people. I think yeah. there were some that were That's fooled right. by the whole thing yeah. because it was Internet and it was online. Yeah. But I think even folks who had been coming in here to the office and knew that it wasn't yeah. real, they really thought that, like, you were deadpan serious. This was how you were going to do it. Well, <laughs> what's interesting is that that's actually how Andy teaches that even, even when he's not pretending to be Dr. Oblivion. Well, it's so it wasn't that much of a struggle. Was it the first cut? And I then, wondered how soon it would, long it would take to get to that the, spot. It, was it the first cut when you had your <laughs> mustache on? Like, it came back and then you had a mustache? Is that the first thing? Well, that's, I mean, that was the other thing that I, I really did, I wasn't prepared for, is that stuff, and I, and I completely like could commiserate with you after that because that stuff is really hard T yeah. to try to get your thoughts around simply just even doing your thing doing your presentation is 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 in and of itself hard if, if you want to call it that yeah. but then to try to plan out you know when i'm going to put on the mustache and when i'm going to put on the hairpiece and and how to transition and to, to be ill well and yeah and how yeah and how to transition to the glasses where i couldn't see yeah. through your glasses versus mine and you, put on my really, contacts. you really start to realize how like episode writers in television shows yeah. like how much how hard it is for oh, one yeah. hour just how much content you need to like fit in and make work and mm -hmm. then to keep track of the whole narrative in your head I mean we could never have kept track of everything and it was just yeah. sort of on the fly well what about this oh no that happened last week and we can't change mm -hmm. that up because this person's related to that and remember that person's dead and you know, That's right. it, and it yeah. really yeah. reminded me all. actually of like when I'll try and tell people what's happening on a soap opera like, mm -hmm. I would try and tell right. people the story of Dr. Yeah. Oblivion, and they'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, trying to explain but it to my wife, too. To it's the same thing. Yeah, to but I also think um, things that people created, like Michael Branson Smith was doing those storifies. Those were awesome. What an amazing, like, artifact of the entire experience. Because I know in another six months, oh, and it Alan, would be, like, almost impossible to recall. And Alan and Liddell's Absolutely. News yeah. in the March, yeah. that stuff. News I just, on the I'll, March always, I'll always think of that stuff. And, and, just, and the way that emerged, not out of a video assignment, but as a way to chronicle the narrative of the class. Because I think we can all agree, part of the idea behind Summer of Oblivion, Dr. Oblivion, and it was emergent, was 
we wanted to actually engage in narrative while we were teaching a class about narrative. And that was the whole mm -hmm. point. And I think to some degrees it worked. And it's kind of making me itch to get into your DS-106 this coming semester and come up with some sort of plan that we can actually every day or every other day work on a narrative and build it story. out. Right. And the, it's just like this meta story that becomes sort of the engine behind the entire class. Now, what about those students, though, who fought against the narrative mm -hmm. or who were not compelled by it or particularly credit-seeking students at Mary Washington. Yeah. Um, that well, that's, sort of when we were talking about the MOOCs in, in general, um, you know, again, there's the students who just aren't comfortable with that stuff and, yeah. and how do you deal with that? And I, you know, I still don't know how you deal with that. I mean, the thing is, it's a digital storytelling class. If you're not comfortable sure. yeah. working yourself through the process That's of right. telling Absolutely. stories in a digital form, mm -hmm. that the whole purpose of this class is jump in the water and start swimming, Absolutely. and we're going to make you and swim. Not just and I mean, in terms of that, it wasn't even just tell consuming a story in a digital form, right. like being a Absolutely. reader of a yeah. digital story. That's yeah. what we were really mm -hmm. asking them to do. And being a reader of a digital story is so different mm -hmm. yeah. from reading, you know, text-based narrative. and and to me, what a wonderful, like, rich, marvelous opportunity, and to have students yeah. who were like, well, I just want you to tell me what I have to do f to get an edit. Well, that's but, exactly what we're fighting against. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so I don't have any problem, and I, I don't think we've had any real yeah. casualties based no. yeah. that those students are going to be those students no matter what we do. Right. So in general, I mean, how do you how do you get a, a, a student prepared with kind of a non-traditional approach? Like to, I'm wondering, to a like class? if we do this in the fall, do we go into it with a little <laughs> bit more heads up for students? I say we go even crazier. Like <laughs> I, I, I mean, I do. I say do. like <laughs> the emails already start the story, and encrypted in right. those stories are if you can't hack it, drop it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you can, and then for like trailers yeah. of stuff that's to come. Right. Like so, if DS 106, and I hope they announce it soon, we can get some information out to those students right away like yeah. if you're going this in, is, you better be prepared and this that's what is, we yeah. did I think for the summer of oblivion mm -hmm. both of us yeah. right. and you know I couldn't have really made it clearer that if you don't want an experimental class that's going to push you on every level don't take this it isn't the right well, class I, for you. I guess I think what's funny about that is that is that they don't know you necessarily but they didn't take it seriously like they thought well you know this is yeah. I don't care what he says this is going to be an easy course yeah. I'm going to do the little bits of work to get this done and I I'll and I'll get my grade then and I you know, drop the hammer well I, yeah. I think it's that's probably just typical of a student especially one who's taking it over the summer just sort of like well I'll push through no matter what it is I don't care uh, yeah you warn me that it's hard or you warn me that it's going to be a lot of stuff but you know, I'll, I'll just do it. You're probably not going to have a lot of students that are going to be willing to drop it and find something else because that means you've missed the whole registration period. You're going to have to find classes yeah. that no one else wanted anyway, whereas they got into DS-106. And it's a, mm -hmm. it's a popular course. It's meeting gen ed requirements. And yeah. so yeah. I think for a lot of them, they're like, no, I'm in this now. I'll do it, and I'll just figure it out. And I think a lot of people think, don't realize, you know, they're not in it for life. And on top of that, they're not <laughs> in it for life. And on top right. of that, a lot of people, like we saw Martha with a few, it's like, they, they use complaining as their way to define who they were in that sure. class. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what can you do about right. that? Yeah. You're, you're, I mean, that's, that's that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I am hopeful that with a, a, the fall semester, that because it's going to be a longer period. More sustained period, narrative. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's a longer period of time. There's more time to build it up. There's more time to spend with the students. Five weeks was just so hard in the yeah. summer mm -hmm. to get everything. And I mean, I was gone on vacation for two weeks, and I felt like I had missed almost the entire class just right. to catch up. And in another show, because I know we're running out of time with this show, I think we should bring in Michael Branson yes. Smith and yeah. hopefully Cheryl Collin and talk to them mm -hmm. about how they can teach their courses at CUNY and at Arizona and start mm -hmm. triangulating right. the story. Yeah. Yeah. And bringing it, you know, well, I, I, I love, love the, the whole idea, idea of, of like a, different... An apocalyptic story <laughs> That'd be awesome. where yeah. we've got like groups of students in different parts of the country who right. are living through a... And I love the idea know. of like these TV live broadcasts like you know, newsrooms, mm -hmm. like one in New York. Right. Yeah, go yeah, back yeah, to yeah. New in New York yeah. and in Virginia, what's happening? And right. we could have a little set there and yeah. then in Arizona, you know, and each of us could exactly. play off of our particular conditions yeah. and where we are. Mm -hmm. Any comments from our fans? Um, Dr. Anything? Garcia says, big difference between fighting against learners who are struggling and fighting against students who want the grade. And that's, that's right. That's yep. the truth right yep. there. It's big. Yeah, absolutely. So, I love yeah. working with learners who are struggling. That's mm -hmm. different. Yeah. And they usually mm -hmm. don't yeah. get penalized for exactly. struggling when well, they're learning. Well, and, and, struggling you, and you had process. some, and I was worried about particular students when, when we did start this, whether they would get it. And then, boy, what a turnaround. Yeah. yeah. You know, they really just, there's some spark happened, yeah. and they and took they, off with it, and they did tremendous work. Yeah. And I think you always got to focus on 
you know, the difficulties. But overall, out of the 24 students who took Summer Oblivion, and this was really a big, you know, they, 18, 19, said they loved it. Yeah, like, right. it was, um, you know, an um, unbelievable experience. Mm -hmm. So, Well, you know, either tomorrow or sometime next week, we're going to get together and talk about what our plans are for the fall, some th ideas that we've got going on. So right. stay tuned for that. Otherwise, yeah. we're done for today. And I'll see you guys in more than a week because I'm going to Outer Banks. So oh, suck yeah. it. Aren't you, aren't you Skyping from the beach? Nope. <laughs> I'm out. Oh, well. He's not for life. I'm for life. We'll I invented the DTL. <laughs> 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 <laughs>